Hi, this is Pavel from Sin Shop in Las Vegas and one half of Amalgamation of Cats. Today I'm going to show you how to put together the Sumo Bot Junior, which is this guy right here. Um, Sumo Bot Junior is a, is a Sumo Bot I designed for Node Bots Day coming up on July 27th. Node Bots Day is a hardware hack day to get Node.js developers playing with robotics and hardware. Um, it'll be taking place all over the world on July 27th. Um, it's being put on by Chris Williams, uh, Daniel Shaw, Raquel Velez, and a bunch of others from the Node community. Um, the idea is to really get people to build any kind of robot. Um, the Sumo Bot has been popular because they come in kits and you can kind of get started really quickly and start coding them. Um, the problem is that a lot of them are between 100 and 160 bucks for the kit. And when Susan and I started planning the Las Vegas event, we were looking for ways to keep costs down, so I decided to try and make one for uh, around 50 bucks, and this guy is the result. It's meant to be easy to put together, cheap, and, and uh, minimalistic and simple. Um, so let's take a look and, and see how to put them together. The project files are all located in the GitHub repository. So you want to go ahead and clone that. And then once you've opened up the folder, you'll see a directory structure like this. First place you want to look is probably in the cutting plans folder right here. This contains the cutting plans for the laser cut parts and the measurement in the file name over here is the thickness of the material that we'll be working with. I'll be using 5mm plywood, so this is my file right here. As you can see, it's just a 2D sketch of the parts we're going to laser cut. It should only take a few minutes to laser cut out all the parts once you start the job. But if you're like most people and you don't have a laser cutter, you'll want to look up your local hackerspace and see if they can help you out. I'm a member of a great space in Vegas called SinShop. You can check out hackerspaces.org to find spaces near you or see if there's a tech shop or similar commercial workshop in your area. You can also use a mail order cutting service like Pinoco.com and it'll probably be about 10 bucks to get this cut in 3mm birch plywood. Okay. The other directory that you'll want to check out is here. It's called uh, 3D Print and it contains the STL file for the 3D printed ball caster looks like this. This one's set up for 16 millimeter ball bearing but it also includes the OpenSCAD file here and OpenSCAD is a parametric modeling system so if you have a different sized ball bearing you can come in here and change it up and re-render and the dimensions of the part will have changed so now this is an 8 millimeter ball bearing caster. If you don't have a 3D printer again check out your local hackerspace or this part's not super important, you can actually buy similar casters at robots parts warehouses like Pololu or you can replace it with something else that rolls like Lego wheels or, or even like a, like a sled. Once you're done with all of the laser cutting and the 3D printing, you can put the kit together. So here are all the bits we're going to need. The, uh, the laser cut bits for the chassis, the 3D printed ball bearing caster, and the ball bearing itself. This is a 16 millimeter ball bearing. Uh, number four wood screws to hold in the caster and the Arduino. Uh, a couple of wide rubber bands to work as treads for the wheels. The Arduino itself, of course. A four AA battery case. And a couple of standard sized continuous rotation servo motors, like these. Okay. And if you are putting together a kit for your NodeBots event, you can just probably stop here, throw everything into a bag and uh, hand it to your participants for them to build their own. But we're going to build this one. Um, so the first piece you want to grab is this. This is the bottom. And you want to make sure this little piggy nose uh, <laughs> bit is, is towards the front. So you just kind of slot these together like this. Like that. And like this. Okay. And then the top plate here. Uh, you want to make sure that the, the two wider sets of holes are towards the back. That's so you can mount your Arduino correctly so that you can plug in the USB cable without a lot of pain later. Uh, slot that in like so. Like so. And finally the, uh, the shovel part right here. Okay. And that's what the chassis looks like. Um, if you don't have a nice tight fit, like I don't right here, you'll probably want to hold this together with a little bit of wood glue. And we'll do that now. I'll just take it apart again. Just using, uh, this is just Elmer's glue all. Normal white glue will, will work. Um, don't need a ton of it. You should just put a little bit around the edges here. So it'll dry it up. 
biggest heat, I'll tell you. Okay. Got a little bit messy. Just apply some right there on the edges. Yeah, yeah we got a little messy. Like that. Like that. Slot it in. wide uh, set of holes towards the back, slide it together, and finally the front bit here. Like so, wipe off your excess glue. And you probably want to clamp it together for a little while and let it dry so you have a solid piece to work on later. Okay, so we'll just let that dry for a little bit and then come back. Alright, it's been about uh, 40 minutes and the glue should be pretty good and dry now. Um, probably didn't need to wait that long, especially since we have. Uh, like a 110 degree day here today. Um, it's pretty good, it's holding together okay. Um, there's a little gap here for me not, uh, not clamping down too good, but it should be okay. Um, so now we can look at mounting the, uh, the servos. So they come like this. There's my screwdriver. Um, and they have these little plastic horns attached to them. Um, and the first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew those. Set the screws aside and take the horns off each one. Like that. Okay. And then uh, there's these little holes in the side of the chassis. You're just going to slip the servos into the side like this. You might have to push a little bit hard, like that. And then the other side. Same deal. Like that. Then from the bottom, you're going to want to zip tie those suckers in there, and I actually forgot to include the zip ties in the list of uh, parts we had earlier. But they're pretty common and not hard to get at. Like that. Make sure that uh, it's good and flush before you zip tie it in. It's pretty good. Then I'm going to snip the extra end off. Like that it with the other side. Like that. Make sure it's flush. Zip tie. Zip. And snip. Like that. Servos are mounted. Uh, next, we're going to mount the wheels. Um, so they have uh, pre uh, pre cut holes in them. And you just kind of pop them down on top of the uh, servo and use the same screws that, uh, that came with the horns and just tighten them down like this. If you have trouble with them, it might help to add like a little rubber washer or something to get some more uh, friction on there. But uh, they've worked for me just fine. Just 
just using the wood like that. Okay. Now your wheels are on. And if you have warped wood, it might be a little bit wobbly, but it's never been a problem for me. I mean, they wobble, but they move just fine. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to look at the caster. So this is the uh, the caster base and the ball bearing. And just sort of pops in like that. Um, if you want to, and it rolls pretty good. If you want to get it back out again, you just pull it out. It's not in there too tight. Like that. So take that and you attach it to the little piggy nose part up front. Let's see what holes there. And number four wood screws. Plastic. Okay. And just position it right over the holes. Once you have the little bit of screw sticking out, it should line up pretty well. And just screw it down like so. It's kind of looking like a robot already. Uh, next, we're going to attach the Arduino. So this is an Arduino Uno uh, Revision 2. Um, it's the only one I have, or the only type I have. Um, so the mounting screw holes are designed for it. Um, whatever you have might be slightly different, um, in which case I would say just use something like double-sided mounting tape instead, or before you laser cut, uh, modify the plan to fit your design. Um, so usually I just use about three screws for this. Just plain to hold it in. Um, and notice that with the wide mounting screws at the back, that the USB plug is uh, is sticking out of the back. So it should be really nice and easy to have a USB rat tail attached to this later on. Like this. And that holds on there pretty good. Cool. All right, that's uh, that's most of it uh, mechanically. Um, so let's start taking a look at the electronics. Uh, so now we have these these servo motor wires sticking out, um, and usually they come with a little um, little connector lead like this. Um, and I snip those off normally. Um, you don't have to. Um, if you don't want to, you can use these uh, little breadboard uh, wires to just kind of connect between that and the, um, and the Arduino if you wanted to. Um, but if you do that, make sure that, uh, that you don't have a lot of loose wires and everything's nice and tight and tucked away. Um, but I snip it because I'm going to, uh, to solder the wires. So I just I snip these off and I snip the red and the black wires a little bit shorter. And the white wires are going to be the signal wires that go into the pins. Um, and here we have our battery case uh, for the four AA batteries. Um, and so you can see how this is kind of arranged here. Um, and if you look here, this, these are the positive and uh, negative terminals on the battery. You can double check. Um, I mean, you have these wires as well. But for the red wire, red is positive, black is negative. Um, and there's also diagrams here. So I'm actually going to solder the positive uh, connections uh, from the servo motors uh, together right here, the red wires together in here and the black wires together in here. Um, and I'll snip off the, the excess red lead because I won't need it. Um, it'll just be an extra wire and I kind of want everything to be good and good and tight. Um, so get the soldering iron heat up a little bit more. So we're going to put the, uh, the red wires together. You just want to twist them a little bit so they stay. That. Just apply some solder to tin the ends. Get the 
it together. So now we have the red wires together. I'm going to do the same for the black. Two list them. Beneficial to stick the battery case in. Um, there's just there should be just enough room, um, and especially with the zip ties in there, just kind of have a, like a for it just to kind of slide right in like that. Okay. Then take the red wires together. in here a little bit and back and solder to the positive terminal there and do the same to the negative on the black we're going to leave this black lead uh, here and I'll show you why in a minute with your fingers, this does get hot. Okay, this one now attached. Finally, um, well not quite finally, uh, you take the negative and the black wires uh, that have been soldered together and you put them into one of the ground pins of the Arduino. This one, this wire is a little bit thin, so we can tin it to give it a little bit more Substance, I guess. So it stays. Okay. And then the white uh, wires, which you'll probably want to tin uh, as well, but I've done it to these already, um, are the signal wires to turn on and off the servos, and they'll go into pins 9 and 10. Um, or whichever pins you really want, uh, but you might have to modify the example program later. So that's about it. Um, finally, you can slip the, the rubber bands over the wheels. They get a little bit finicky, which is why I usually save this step for the very last. So they don't come popping off as I'm twisting this around and shifting it and doing the electronics bits like that and the other side here There you have it. Um, next, we will hook it up to uh, the computer and get uh, and get everything set up working with the example program. The example code folder contains a simple keyboard control program for your bot, making use of Rick Waldron's excellent Johnny Five Node Library. I think it's pretty standard across the Node Bots events. It basically is a Node.js interface to control your Arduino over the USB serial interface. Um, you'll need to have the Fermata sketch uploaded to your Arduino before you can use it, though. So you'll open up the uh, Arduino IDE. We'll plug in your Arduino first via the USB cable, and then you open up the IDE and open up Examples Fermata Standard Fermata, and then just hit upload. You make sure that your serial port is set correctly. Mine is this one. Go ahead and hit upload and that'll upload the sketch and then it should be ready to go. So you want to make sure that you also have the um, Johnny5 and Keypress libraries installed. So you can do that via NPM. Okay, then once those are set up, just run the software, wait for it to connect, and then you just use the arrow keys to control your bot. Space to stop, cue to quit. 
And that's really all there is to it. All right, so the first time you start the Sumo Bop node program, the bot might go crazy and start moving around. Um, and that is, <laughs> uh, even though you press space uh, bar to stop, and it's not, right? Um, and that's because the first time you'll probably need to adjust the servos. Um, so the way you do that is look at the back of the bot. There are two pots on the backs of the servos. You grab a little screwdriver like this and just adjust each one until the wheel stops moving, making sure that, uh, that the robot thinks it's supposed to be stopped. Let's do that. Okay, like that. That kind of adjusts the servo to, uh, to tell it where 90 degrees is. Um, the way the continuous rotation servos work is that zero degrees is forwards, 90 degrees is stop, and 180 is backwards. And I guess that really depends on the way you have it mounted. But once that's done, stopping should stop, should go forward, backwards, and everything should work more or less as you expect it to. I encourage you guys to modify the bots as much as possible. Play with the software, make it do uh, whatever you'd like, change the speeds, the, the rotations, put in little tricks to, to make them dodge uh, you know, other sumo bots. The, the fact that the robot itself is made out of wood means that it takes paint and magic marker and things you glue on and, and drill holes and, and things uh, really easily. So it's actually quite easy to customize and that's really the whole idea of the design. Thank you.